mind and your full attention. So you say you deal with esoteric information? I never heard of such. Well, you're in for a treat. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. So you claim to be a god? Damn right I'm a god. The maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, father of civilization, god of the universe. Wow. Tune in or lose, friend. All strategies apply mathematically. The information he drop is real powerful. So get your notepad, it's more than an hour full. Watch your jaw, the crew is watching talk. Indigenous to the land, wherever we stand. First world order, we bring it at home in the first quarter. Invisible lines don't apply, we cross borders. Silly rabbit, knowledge for God. No matter where you resign, Lodge, Temple of Mars. So don't fret or proceed with hesitation. Just tune in to Blog Talk to get the information. Peace. Hey, I'll tell you, watch the tar east. Peace, family. This is Brother Fahim Tecumseh El Bay. Filling in tonight for uh, Dr. Aileen El Bay. And <clears throat> hope everything is all right with you and yours and your family and everything. And the topic is going to be tonight about <clears throat> Washita, the history of the Moors. And I put it this way put a more understanding and overstanding. And nationality, and how things works when you get nationalized, and it's not what a lot of people think what it is, and it's the things how to do it, how to um, carry yourself as a nationalized more, what is and what is not. What you should do or what you shouldn't do. But first, I'm gonna deal with uh, some of the pages of the, from the First World Order, Doctor Asur Alim uh, El Bay's book, The First World Order. Which I hope, if you don't have this book, I hope that you're working on it, making it a part of your library, because it's very important that you have this book. It has a lot of information in it. Okay. Yes, I'm going to read certain articles from this book here. And I'm, for, the, for, for those who still do not understand commerce and how the commercial system is ran around the world, well, this is for you, okay? It says here, 1925 Common Era, or CE, to 1933 Common Era or Christian era, whatever you prefer to call it. It says here, the U.S. bankruptcy and the Moors. The perseverers of so-called white supremacy were just walking along, minding their own business, suppressing, destroying, and or misrepresenting the truth about history, Moors' history in particular. When went out, of nowhere came the savor for the fallen people, that they had extinguished the light and the life within. His appellation is Noble Drew Ali. Some people prefer to call him Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali or El Hajj Malik Abdul Ali, whatever, you know. But we are talking about the same person. Peace be upon him. Okay. All right. 
having traveled the world, Noble Drew Ali obtained knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and overstanding into the many truths the oppressors were working so hard to hide. After detecting our true identity as Moors and our and our true history as possessors of the oldest artifacts and burial sites and what has been misnomers as the so-called Americas as opposed to the lies the so-called white supremacists was spewing forth. All blacks were brought to the Americas by us to be our slaves. Noble Drew Ali implemented a series of actions, a series of actions to begin the process of resurrecting our people from the comatose and dead levels. These efforts culminated in the reemergence of the Moors as a community in the sense of a body politic that was gestating, rebuilding into a nation once again. In 1928, Common Era, RCE, the Pan-American Conference was held in Havana, Cuba. Secretary of State Hughes went down to represent the United States, and Noble Drew Ali went down to represent the Moors. At that conference, the mandate for the landmass of Greater Amexum, North, Central, and South and Central Amexum, misnomer as the North, Central, and South Americas, was returned to the Moors. Noble Drew Ali knew what this meant and what the ramifications of this was and is. Noble Noble took several stopgap measures, Drew Ali, to secure our, the Moors, birthright inheritance and beneficiary interest as Moors to the land mass within the affirmation land mandate. The actions of Noble Drew Ali were detected by the so-called white supremacists, and they immediately proceeded to, to act to do all they could to impede his work and take him out. Fortunately, natural law governs all events, Thus, by the time the oppressor made his move on Noble Drew Ali, Noble Drew Ali had already put things in motion. This scared the international banksters because land and labor is where all of your wealth comes from in the carnal world, and Noble Drew Ali had just, just yanked all the land from the so-called Alaska to so-called Argentina out from under them, even though we the Moors, as a community, were mentally comatose at that time, still comatose, if you ask me. Uh, at that time, the international banksters recognized that the potential for our instant return to our place of prominence in the global scene existed. Thus, the international banker, bankers, uh, banksters recall all of their loans in a panic, which in turn put a squeeze on the stock market, which caused its collapse. Months after the assassination, assassination of Noble Drew Ali, so this this, this will cause the uh, Great Depression, as it is known in history in the history books. You know, it is said that most of our people were comatose at the time. Well, sad to say, most of our people are still comatose. Here it is in 2017. This was in 1928. And we still living, uh, doing things and going through a lot of BS that we shouldn't be a part of our lives. But it is, sadly to say, okay. Uh, a lot of people, when they first get nationalized, uh, when I uh, first came on the broad broadcast about a minute ago, when I said that uh, this lecture is about more of an overstanding and understanding about what nationality is and what our nationality is about being a nationalized Moors. See, uh, a lot of people keep saying that, well, the Moors, this, the Moors, that, well, we are all Moors, uh, whether some of us accept it or not, or whether some of us know it or not, or whatever, you know. We are all Moors. We are all uh, attached to the land. I mean, whatever would you call yourself, you know, um, uh, there, there are more. Some people say, "Well, when were you a Moor? All my life, all your life. Well, since I was born, my mother was a Moor. My mother before her, my mother ap before her was a Moor, and mother before her and her was a Moor. You know, so all I, my ancestors were Moors. 
you know, um, <clears throat> this is a lot of people, uh, they keep on thinking that the Moors are some group of uh, so-called black people that call themselves Moors with some kind of religion, you know. They are being misled by their misleaders and by their uh, agents, you know, like Sadnetta, you know, Dr. Reggie, Professor Larry, and so on. Even some of the Moors in the Moor Science uh, Divine National Movement still believe that uh, we came from Africa on on ships, on boats, on slave ships. They believe that we were stacked on their, on those ships like sardines, and for three months, almost four months, we have defecated and urinated, you know, and everything. Especially the women when they come to their menstrual cycles, uh, all that sets up. Uh, 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 toxic, toxic poison, you know. So there's no way uh, they could have made it across the Atlantic Ocean like that for those many months and days. More than half of them would have died out. If the ones, if those who had that, had survived, they'd have been so messed up, they wouldn't be able to do any kind of work for their masters. As far as the women is concerned, as far as them for breeding is concerned, they wouldn't be able, be able to have any children. They, their hormones and everything else was out of whack. So how 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 can that be? How was that possible? There were some of us that would that got shipped from Africa to the Americas. You know, make no mistake about that. And I don't I don't want you to get me wrong. You know, but for the most part. 80 to 85 percent of us was already here for probably millions of years. Where certain artifacts and certain archaeologists come up with certain science, science, I mean, scientifically facts. Even uh, not only footprints uh, for over 100, for over 100, or maybe on hundreds of thousands of years, but over many years, sh- shoe prints. Believe it or not, you can read the book of the archaeology of, uh, of, of science of the human race, I believe, by Michael Cremore. I might be pronouncing that that name wrong. And also, you can uh, read the book called "When Rocks Cry Out," also by Michael Cremore. Very good, interesting books. Very good, interesting books. Okay. But I'm going to go on with dealing with the with the economic and the commerce, the history of the, uh, in this country. I'm going to deal with that. All right. I'm going to deal with a, a numerous of subjects uh, tonight, dealing with the commercial side of the of the United States Corporation, uh, dealing with um, the public side and the, uh, the the public side and the uh, private side of things. Uh, you know, different um, different issues, history, the history of uh, the little bit of history of the Washita, just a little bit of it, if I ever have time to get to it. Okay, just bear with me. All right. Okay. Nevertheless, the so-called Europeans on both sides of the Atlantic knew that their system was and is existing and functioning on borrowed time. I'm going to stop right here. Or I'm going to read this again. Nevertheless, the so-called European on both sides of the Atlantic knew that their system was and is existing and functioning on borrowed time. They knew then that this can only last for so long. Anytime when you put a bunch of lies or stack up a bunch of things that's not, not real, uh, the falsehood, uh, the make-believes, and all that, what he's talking about, it could only last for so long. And then, uh, until now, you know a lot of things is getting ready to, uh, to show what this uh, what this statement meant. No, the European Empire is constantly crumbling. 
jobs are constantly leaving. I, I, there has been for the last, I don't know, 30 years going overseas, dealing with this NAFTA thing, the North American Treaty uh, um, um, Alliance. Nabisco Cookie Company, uh, Nabisco Cookies that make cookies. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. An uh, Oreo Cookie Company had left left this country and went to Mexico. And what no, what uh, President Donald, uh, Donald Trump is saying is true about uh, global warming. It's a hoax. It is make believe. It was always pure fiction. Always. They are not telling the people the truth that it is the sun that is pulling the earth toward it in the next cycle. It's not the earth. It's the sun. But that's where all your gravity comes from. You don't believe me? Wait till the sun leaves and see what will happen. Like I said before in other lectures, the Son is the true Savior. Didn't say that in their churches and their cathedrals and whatever, and their uh, uh, kingdom halls about Jesus being the Savior. Well, Jesus is a solar mythical figure, another solar god, like the rest of the figures in the Bible. He is the Savior. The Son is the Savior. Say if Vincent and the Son decide to go somewhere and, see, and watch and see what will happen. Next thing you know, you would be standing on Mars somewhere. The last thing you know, you you standing in McDonald's. Trying to order you some food. Don't know how you got on Mars. Yes, they are on borrowed time, and their borrowed time is about to end. That's why I say a lot of you Asiatic people, by Asiatic people, you need to get nationalized. You need to think serious, 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 serious about nationalization. I say it again, and I repeat myself again. Nationality is the order of the day. All this other stuff dealing with the UCC ones filing and the non UCC filings that can you know that no 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 that that has to take a back seat. You do your nationality first, foremost, then get a good understanding of your nationality and what it and what it all means. Okay, let me continue on. <clears throat> They also realize that the length of the borrowed time is direct, directly tied to the length in, of our time, the Moors. Ignorance, lack of knowledge of ourself, our history, our culture, and what is rightly, justly ours. This fact is what has compelled the so-called white supremacists to do all that is possible <clears throat> to keep the undeclared, mentally comatose Moors from ever waking up and reclaiming all their right, rightly belongs to our people, and at the same time, keep the rank and file unsuspecting so-called European from finding out what is really going on. Let me read this part again. Keep the rank and file unsuspecting so-called Europeans from finding out what is really going on? I'm going to let y'all figure that out, what that meant, what that actually meant. All right. Noble drew Ali's work as a result of what transpired at the Pan-American Con Conference touched off a flurry of activity on both sides of the Atlantic because the so-called European from both sides of the Atlantic knew 
what was coming as a result. The actions of Nobel Duvalier all called the so-called Europeans to assemble themselves to conspire and plot a way to deal with what they thought would be the reemergence of the Moors to whom their respective countries are tributary uh, as they always have been the U.S. and Barbary powers. By Read that book by, I don't know if you can find the book, book now nowadays, but read the book called The U.S. and Barbary Powers by David McRitchie, written in the 1800s, Common Era, documents this fact. Noble Drew Ali knew that the time of our, the Moors, resurrection had had not come and know that his days was numbered. In fact, Noble Drew Ali, all, Ali stated, it will take you Moors 50 years to figure out what I have been, what I have done. What I have done is not for you Moors, but for the third and fourth generation from now. Who is he talking about, the third and fourth generation from now? Who is he talking about? He's talking about us, living in these times and these days. Okay. There will be now moors, there will be new moors that will come with their eyes open, seeing and knowing, and they will set you old moors in the back and carry out my law. The so-called European was horrified at the potential of my people rising 71 years ago yet. Noble Drew Ali knew our minds were not ready then. Nevertheless, the so-called United States, Great Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and Portugal convened in Geneva, Switzerland for five continuous years, from 1928 Common Era to 1932 Common Era, to set up what would be the policy of all the participating countries. These five years of meetings became known as the Geneva Convention. In 1930, Common Era was the so-called United States Great Britain, France, Germany, and Italy, Spain, and Portugal all declared bankruptcy. This was in 1930. And I'm going to go back to say here the Geneva uh, Convention, which was set up, also uh, is dealing with uh, certain rules and regulations of, of uh, when certain wars occur. You know, under the Geneva Convention, they deal with how prisoners of war should be should be treated. Although you know that was greatly ignored, those of you that know history and study history and talk to a lot of uh, ex POWs, you know that uh, a lot of that has been that law has been broken. So, okay. Any attempt to obtain the minutes of the 1930 uh, Common Era Geneva Convention are futile because they publish the volume of minutes for every year of the Geneva Conventions, including 1930 Common Era, but refused to make the 1930 Common Era minutes available to the public because they contain the evidence of the bankruptcy. I'm not going to let you look at those records. Okay, going into the 1932 Common Era, the affirmation states stopped meeting in Geneva. In 1932 Common Era, Franklin... Delano Roosevelt became the U.S. president, and his job was to put into place and administer the bankruptcy that the United States had declared two years earlier and hide the bankruptcy from the unsuspecting public by establishing a reorganization plan, which was called the New Deal, administration state that functioned under the color of the United States of America, under the color of the United States of America, okay? I mean, color, I mean, you know, I mean, colorable fiction, colorable law, uh, colorable, you know, office, and so on and so on and so on. The The United States of America and the United States for America, along with the United States, Constitution became defunct from the moment on, and all that we 
uh, that remained was the unsolvent bankrupt for a profit corporation known as the United States, codified and documented in the Title 26 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 1911-2, parentheses H, and re Merriam 30, NE 505-141, New York 479, upheld by the 16th Street, Connecticut, Okay, this is numbers of code ten seventy three dot one six three US dot one two five four one. Also, you have to see uh, the District of Columbia versus uh, the Crust case. Okay, it says here the so-called states all revamped their local constitutions by nineteen thirty eight, coming here to take into account their capitulation to the bankrupt mother corporations doing business at the United States, thus clearing the way for the Buck Act of 1940, allowing the corporate United States to extend its jurisdiction and by, by default usurp all sovereignty over the now defunct state republics. Getting back to Roosevelt, he was sworn into the United States presidency presidency <coughs> Presidency in January 1933, Common Era. I'm going to stop right here. So was Adolf Hitler. Had made Chancellor of Germany. He became German Chancellor of Germany in 1933 also. After the Kaiser Wilhelm had passed away. Those who that know history know what I'm talking about. Okay. Coincidence, huh? You think so? I don't think so. <clears throat> okay. In January 1933, and wasted no time getting the bankruptcy, Roosevelt immediately shut the banks down, what they call bank holidays today, okay? That was a banking holiday. And proceeded to pull all the gold out of circulation while pl- replacing it with debt currency tender with the Moors seal, but just the pyramid, the Great Pyramid. The pyramid with the all-seeing eye on the back of the U.S. $1 bill, Reserve Note. I'm going to stop right here again. Now you know the Federal Reserve Note, what they call the $1 bill, or the so-called $1 bill, which does not exist, because it's only a debt note. As you notice on the back of the, uh, the Reserve Note, you find there's um, two seals. You know, actually it's one. The one with the eagle is the back of the uh, back of the coin. The one in the front is the pyramid. That's the great seal of the Asiatic Moorish nation, or the Moorish nation. That is our great seal. Uh, you notice that the eye of the tip, uh, the tip of the pyramid with the uh, all seeing eye, is separated from the pyramid. But actually, the real seal, the or the, the original seal, has the uh, the all seeing eye connected to the pyramid. That is the real seal. And what that symbolizes is that uh, we have lost consciousness of ourselves in our minds. So therefore, somebody else has control of it, over it. That's a lot of shirts I wear uh, when I go out into, into the public. I have the great seal on my shirts. I have one with the eagle and the, the, the you know, and the one with the pyramid. To, to, to separate the two, it says here, the dual jurisdiction of the Moorish nation. Because it's dual. One is public, one is private. That is what it is talking about. One is the republic form of government, one is a democracy. Democracy is one with the eagle on it. The talons with the arrow, the 13 arrows, and the 13 leaves on the other, on the other talon of the eagle. This represents war and peace.
But now with now the the the, the uh, pyramids that I wear on my shirts has the all seen eye connected to the pyramid, which means that now the, uh, we have got our conscience back. The conscience has came back to the moors. Now we got a, um, our head is back on our shoulders. Just want to put a little science out there, you know, for those that didn't know. But those that do know, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about the ones that don't know. Okay? Now some people say, I already know that. Yeah, I know some of you already know that. But this is for the people that don't know. All right? Let me go on. Uh, <clears throat> start right here. President, The presidency in January 1933. Common era and wasted no time. In, okay. All right. Turn the page here. Now, The Clock of Destiny, Book 2, by Charles M. Bay. On page 6 states, the Amazon red skin, white moors, tawny moors, bleached out moors, progress was guided by the cycle of the planets, Jupiter and Mars, from 1789 Common Era to 1933 Common Era, a period of 140 years, Mars passes through the 12 signs of the Zodiac 72 times and spells the rise and fall of Rome on a universal... Hold up, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I skipped the line. 72 times and Jupiter passes through the 12 signs of the Zodiac 12 times. And, and 140 years. Thus, from 1789 Common Era to 1939 com, com, Common Era, spelled to the rise and fall of Rome on a universal scale. Take note of the fastest symbols on both sides of the speaker's podium in the U.S. Congress. <coughs> He's talking about the fasci, uh, the fasci, but you see it on the back of the dime. Next time you get a dime, Look at the back of it. Those are the fasci, which represents fascism. That's what he's talking about. But if you have time, just pull out this. Uh, if you've got coins, uh, whatever, just pull out the dime and look at the back of it. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what they represent. Okay? <clears throat> Keep it in mind that the first eight presidents under the Articles of Confederation there were seven prior to them under the Articles of Association were Moors, and they were in power from 1774 Common Era to 1789 Common Era. <clears throat> when the keys of power were transferred into the custodianship of the mystic Turks, the so-called European Masons, and Shriners that the Moors charged with the duty and responsibility of protecting our <clears throat> sacred shrine. New Jerusalem and Washington, D.C., called New Jerusalem, Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. And our sciences, until we as a people arose, arose from our state of spiritual, moral, and ethical decay and awakened from our slumber to reclaim all that rightfully belongs to us from their custodianship. The ninth U.S. President, George Washington, which was the 16th under the Constitution, okay, actually was a Grand Master Mason under the tutorage of Emmanuel Mu'ali Ben Bay, which is uh, commonly known as Benjamin Banneker. Because <clears throat> Banneker actually is Banaka. <clears throat> and, it's, and it's Moorish uh, uh, original name. Or appellation, free appellation. It was just translated into English, like Washington actually is Washita. Who's the United Washita? D to the Monday or more Empire. <clears throat> like my name is uh, one of my middle name is Tunica. The origin of the word Turner in English. 
Okay, let me move along here. <clears throat> George Washington was the first and first U.S. president and Grand Master Mason. Franklin Douglas Roosevelt was the late was the last so called European president to rule in that one hundred and forty year cycle. I'm gonna read this over again. <clears throat> okay, all this over again. Maybe some of you get a better understanding. The ninth U.S. president, George Washington, actually the 16th under the Constitution, was a Grand Master Mason under the tutelage of Emmanuel Mu'ali Ben Bay. Benjamin Bannekin in parentheses, George Washington was the first and the first U.S. president and Grand Master um, uh, Grand Master Mason Franklin Roosevelt was the last so-called European president to rule in the 140-year cycle. This is the 140-year cycle that uh, in the Clock of Destiny, Book 2. This is what they are talking about, uh, a period of 140 years, Mars passed through the 12 signs of the Zodiac. That's what they are talking about, 72 times. And this is what this all this is based on, dealing with the Zodiac, dealing with cosmological science. And this is how government, or so-called government, is ran. Operation is ran. Uh, this is how they run government. This is how they uh, do operational surgery on people. They deal with astrology, believe it or not. Because there are some days they will not operate on you. I had doctor's appointments where they're being canceled because of certain days. My appointment was on Halloween, October 31st, but they canceled it. See, all this is based on our science, on Morris science. Another thing, too, uh, it would behoove a lot of you uh, uh, conscious Morris to get the books, uh, the book, The Clock of Destiny, book one and book two by C.M. Bay. Called the Clock of Destiny One and Book Two by C. M. Bay, Charles M. Bay. Get those two books. They're very important books. All right. Roosevelt knew that he was the last to rule in the hundred in the one hundred and forty four year progressive cycle of Roman universal influence. When he established a new order or a new deal idea and broke the Roman order by ruling for 12 years, which is the measurement of man. I'll read this over again. Roosevelt knew that he was the last to rule in the 144-year progressive cycle of Roman universal influence when he established a new order or new deal idea and broke the Roman order by ruling for 12 years taking place. That is the 12 zodiac signs. I keep on telling you, it's all, it's all based on astrology and astronomy, astronomy, all about dealing with that, that with the cosmologic science. Okay? And this is how they rule. This is how they uh, start wars. This is how they win wars. This is how they fight battles and wars, when to attack, when not to attack, you know, uh, when a, a war will end, when a war will start. It has to, it depends on, on the certain way the moon is setting or the sun is setting at a certain uh, part of the year. This is how they build buildings. How the Masons uh, set up what you call um, um, cornerstones to be the moon had to be set or the sun had to be set in a certain position at a certain time of that year, of that month, or of that week. This is how Washington D.C. was structured off of the constellation of stars, off of the twelve constellation of stars. That's what they're talking about when they say, go back. When they said that, uh, what did it say here? Uh, 
and I lost where I was at. Hold off a minute. Yeah, when it says that Roman, he says that that, that broke the had broke the Roman order by ruling for twelve years, taking place. Cause he, he he what they mean? Okay, okay. He has won the election in nineteen thirty two. He served from 1932 to 1936. He won election again in 1936 and went all the way to 1940. He won the 1940 election and served in 1944. Then he won the 1944 election, but he did not want you want want a fourth term. He was going to do a fourth term, but he died. In the year under uh, uh, in the in the month of April, between April twelfth, I can't remember, was it April twelfth and the fourteenth of that year, nineteen forty-five. While the, uh, the Second World War was still raging in Europe and the Pacific, he did not live to see that fourth term, but did he did broke the twelve-year cycle. He did. <clears throat> For at least uh, for three and a half months, anyway. Which was, but he never got a chance to complete that fourth year term, which would have been a 16th year cycle. That would have been a 16th year cycle. Times I believe he was murdered instead of just passing away from whatever sicknesses they said he had. They said he had polio, but I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. It's okay. I'm going to move along here, though. Uh, because the 12 years, uh, like I said, it, was, it, 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 uh, it, it is the measurement of man. The 12 years is the measurement of man. But he went over that. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, when Roosevelt was giving those famous fireside chats, he knew what was taking place, the beginning of the gradual return of the keys of power to the rightful owners, the Moors. Everything that was taken from us, Moors, is quietly is quietly being prepared for its eventual return to us, Moors. The goal, the U.S. is the tributary uh, tributary to the Moors, and they have to repay a $25 million in gold loan that we made to the U.S. government in 1861, common era, that the U.S. Congress is responsible to repay, which is why the seal of the Moors is on the back of the U.S. $1 currency, tender, illegal tender, IOU, and all of the land was taken and the so-called Whites were reduced from landowner status to mere land user status. The land they murdered my ancestors for and stole so they could fraudulently provide their silent cohorts, their people with fraudulent land grants, land patents, allodial titles that those thieves and their descendants have no spiritual, moral, or ethical right to. The same applies to Kenya, Zimbabwe, so-called South Africa, Australia, etc., yet they claim that they are God-fearing, a God-fearing nation. Let me start right here. Uh, how many of you know that a lot of the, the Europeans are being ordered out of South Africa? They gradually are being out, ordered out of, to get out of South Africa. Why? Because they are not the, the aboriginal indigenous people of South Africa. Same here in the Americas. They have to leave. Not only in Africa, only only the uh, the European Dutch people, uh, but the Chinese as well, which are called themselves settling and marrying a lot of the African uh, Asiatic women there. You know, trying to get land and all this all this kind of mess. But the people from those different African nations that got wise to the Chinese people. Now they got to leave too. Got to get out. Got to get out. And so are the Dutch, uh, uh, people of Dutch ancestry, they have to get out of South Africa because they are not Africans. 
like the people here, like the European people here. They are not Americans. They are not Americans. You hear them say, uh, sometimes they use the word pilgrim. Well, look up the word pilgrim in any dictionary, and it will tell you it means foreigner. Even when they say they're, but a lot of us got a problem with them saying that, uh, uh, Europeans saying that, uh, oh, I'm Italian American, I'm Irish American, I'm German American, uh, blah, 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 blah. You know, I don't have no problem with it because what they are saying is they are descendants of these Irish, Germans, and Italians, uh, descendants of German, uh, of Irish, German, Italians, immigrants that came to America. That's what they're actually saying. So, yeah, let them go ahead and keep on saying that they're Italian-Americans, German or Irish-Americans. Let them keep on saying that. But we ourselves, we Moors ourselves, Asiatic people, we are Americans, period. I don't say I'm Moorish American. I don't say that. Me, myself, I don't say that. I am an Aborigine Indigenous American. That means I am the very first, the very first beginning of inhabitants of this land. That is Aborigine. Indigenous meaning I am a native and natural to this land. That's indigenous. Latostinous, meaning I am one who is to spring forth from the soil of this land. Need I say more? Okay. Uh... If this is so, the doctrine of discovery from the Vatican, which is still in force, would cease to exist effective immediately. If this is all, I mean, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Read the wrong, hold up, read the wrong page. Okay, I'm got on the right page now. If this is so, then the so-called whites will gladly return our lands, repay, uh, the loan we made to them make recom, uh, recompense to us from the Tuskegee experiment, Emmett Till, Maurice Bishop, the Berlin Conference, of those uh, of that have studied history will know what I'm talk, what he has talked about in this book, what Dr. Aileen is talking about in this book. You will know what he's talking about. The Tuskegee, the Tuskegee experiment was the experiment on a lot of our Asiatic men and gave them syphilis. This was, an, this was an experiment that was done for years. The Emmett Till, which the, the young brother that was beaten to death, was they say now, they found out now, uh, the young brother never whistled at the so-called white woman. Maurice Bishop, he was uh, the president of uh, uh, Granada, not Granada, Spain, but Granada and the Caribbean islands. The Berlin Conference was a decision where all the European nations had got together and decided what piece of Africa that uh, they want to be, uh, want they want to be part of. Each nation want to have this part of Africa. Each nation want to have that part of Africa and the Americas as well. The American continent as well. All this deals with the Berlin Conference. All right, let me move along here. And we, too much to list here, but don't worry. We will get that, get to that too, to, to be in harmony with the God, the so-called European claims to love, honor, respect, and obey. This is bankrupt. And, and its sovereignty is gone. The courts of the U.S. and the states are not sovereign. 
Thus, the courts and prosecutors cannot have nor bring a claim against anyone because as a bankrupt entity, it has no authority to operate, which it don't. That's why when they joined the bar, uh, the American Bar Association, uh, which is the American Bar, the American Bar, Bar, British Adhesion Regency. That's why they had to give up their citizenship. And for those that call themselves black, African American, and uh, people of color, they never had no citizenship because they never were citizens of this corporation. So they had no citizenship to give up, number one, as far as the Asiatic people is concerned. They call themselves attorneys, district attorneys, lawyers, uh, judges, and so forth. Okay? Because if any one of you listening to this, to this broadcast tonight, I want you to hear this too. Says it said, um, technically, there are no more courts in the U.S. and the states. Technically, there are not. There are all mock courts. To so give you an instance, there's no such thing as a traffic court. But you see a lot, most of our people uh, in these mock courts, these so-called traffic courts, most of, most of them are our people. Why? Because we are worth our birth certificate and our uh, bonds are worth a whole lot more than the other uh, for our so-called white people birth certificates and other people birth certificates. Take you back during the time of uh, during the so-called slavery, during the Atlantic slave trade, uh, the reason why the Europeans were the first to be slaves here in America. Because yes, they were yes, they were first the beast. They were uh, the first slaves in the Americas, believe it or not. Yes, were Europeans, mainly from Ireland. Okay, reason why? Because uh, so-called white slavery was cheaper, a whole lot cheaper than buying a so-called black slave. All the way to this day, that's why you see so many of us in these prisons. The birth certificate, which is a bond, worth a whole lot more money than the so-called white birth certificates. That's why you see so many of us in these mock courts on different traffic infractions and violations that they call. Well, there's another thing. This is why I hate when our people call themselves African Americans. You saying that you are Africans? You said you saying you are descendants of Africans that uh, migrated to this country, or immigrants to this country. That's what you're saying. You are constantly disconnecting yourself from the land of the Americas or the Almorocks. You're disconnecting yourself from the true land of your foremothers and forefathers, and you're dishonoring them. When you say that or make that statement, when you call yourself black, African-American, people of color, Negro. All right? Okay. Let me move along here. There are only private corporations doing business as quasi-courts with magistrates and administration, administrative, I mean, administrative judges. An administrative judge is not the same as a judge. The U.S. bankruptcy is expressed in Franklin Delano Roosevelt's Executive Orders Numbers 607, 6073, 6111, and 6260. It says, see U.S. Senate Report 93-4, I mean 549, page 187, under Trading with the Enemy Act. 1917, codified as the United States Code, Title 12, Section 95A, House Joint Resolution 192 of June 5, 1933, Common Era, confirmed 
and Perry v. U.S., 1933 case, citing 294 U.S., 330, 381, and the United States Code, Title 31, Sections 5112 and Sections 5119, United States President William J. Clinton, Bill Clinton, and his staff as well as his ancestors in the U.S. Speaker, J. Dennis Haster, Hastert, are all aware of the reemergence of the Moors on the global scene in the form of the Maxim Moor Empire. All of the information parties know that the day that they are, they are their ancestors returned to the keys of power, to the original and legitimate owner, the Moors are rapidly approaching the Maxim Moor Empire, national, regional, regional, and local government is on the scene, fully operational and ready to govern by, by and under the power, authority, and permission of the superb and supreme divine creator of all things. That's very, very, very true. Like I say, a lot of you, I need, if you don't have this book, The First World Order, by uh uh, Dr. Asoleen El Bay, get this book. It's very informative. It'll really enlighten you on a lot of things. Now let's go to the page: the U.S. bankruptcy and the Moorish board. Uh, the U.S. bankruptcy and Moors two. Okay. Article four, section four of the U.S. Constitution stated that the United States shall guarantee every state in this union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. Take note that a Republic form of government, the Pledge of Allegiance, the Pledge of Allegiance to the Republic for which it stands, and what is guaranteed, not a democracy, i tell you that, the Bill Clinton impeachment trial against Bill Clinton and had nothing to do with Bill Clinton or the White House. In turn, okay, the Bill Clinton impeachment was a public debate about whether the U.S. citizens wanted to re- remain an artificial or as artificial entities, corporations under the ownership, control, and jurisdiction of the bankrupt and sovereign U.S., Thus, continuing to exist as economic slaves, the public, the public, or the republic, as opposed to private. The other alternative for the U.S. citizen would be to become U.S. citizens again, thus existing as a sovereign or a private citizen. Public civil rights only as opposed to private U.S. and state constitutional rights. That's what I mean by the two signs of the pyramid and the eagle with the leaves and the arrows on each talon on the back of the so-called dollar bill. Those two symbols have a very deep significance and importance and, and deep meaning, although it is all in one. Because you see on a dollar bill it says one. Like I say, the eagle with the leaves and the arrows on his talon are in the back of the coin. The pyramid is on the front. It is one coin, one of many. The previous unum. That is more Latin for one of many. Okay. The Republican Party served as the convict. As, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, start this over again. The Republican Party served as the consul that was arguing for a republic law and form, and a, and the Democratic Party served as the consul arguing arguing the democracy law form before the U.S. citizen or citizens in an open debate. The question was: Do we try Clinton within the republic? private form of government or under the rule within the democracy or the public form of government. Question. Try to try, try Bill Clinton under the rules within the republic form of government 
as the Republican Party had argued would have required the U.S. Congress to address and settle the U.S. bankruptcy. And that they weren't going to do. Okay? The Maxim Moore Empire, as a creditor of the U.S., would love that to happen because the U.S. Congress would be forced to settle all claims against the U.S. because the U.S. government would have to be sovereign to be able to, to bring a claim against Bill Clinton or anyone else for that matter upon which relief can be granted. Okay, what they're saying is you have to bring the Constitution back before you can impeach any president such as um, um, Donald Trump. They're not going to impeach him. And for those who think they are going to impeach him, get it out of your minds right now. They are not going to impeach this man. You might as well get ready for it. Why? Because the Constitution has been lifted. You have to have a constitutional form of government. You have to have a republic form of government. What is the difference between a republic and a, a democratic form of government? What is the dis- difference between the two? This is, what is the difference? Okay, the difference is that republic is, uh, is by law. A democracy is by majority. Or you can say mob rule. Or you can say rule by the crazy demon. Give you give you an example. Say if I myself and maybe a couple of people that are listening to this radio show tonight say that we were all sheriffs and uh, we had this man in jail for murder and rape, okay? But the whole town's people will want want to break in and get this man and lynch him. But we can't let them do that because we are required by law to protect this man until he is tried and found guilty by a court of law. That is a republic. Now, say maybe about a hundred and maybe two hundred, three hundred of these people broke into the jail, overpowered us, got the man, then lynched him. Okay, that was a majority that overpowered co out of us. You know, that was the majority. That's your democracy at work. They had the power to do what they done, but they did not have the right. So what they done was unlawful. That's why the sheriff today, the sheriff is the real police officer and not these policy holders that we call police officers. Former government and the democracy, that is the symbol of the two symbols on the back of the dollar bill, the dual jurisdiction of the Moorish nation. Hope everybody getting that. I know everybody has this information already, but, but I'm, like I'll say it again, I am talking to those that who who who, those, who are those that don't, okay. All right, let me move it along here. Okay, where was I left off at? Okay. The Mexico Empire is okay. It's a creditor of the U.S. Well, okay, I'm, I read it already. Okay. The Republican Party argued for the republic form of government because a sovereign government regains its sovereignty when it is no longer beholding to its lender. The Democratic Party argued for and won the democracy form of government to be maintained. Thus, the U.S. remains bankrupt and sovereign. So is Great Britain, France, Spain, Portugal, Germany, Italy, Denmark, Etc. 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 Geneva Convention participants. The U.S. Congress was charged 
with the responsibility of managing the U.S. finance in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 5 of the U.S. Constitution, and Article 1, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution states that states may not coin their, their own money nor make anything but gold and silver coins and a t- coin a tender and payment of debts. Excuse me. I'm going to read this over again. The U.S. Congress was charged with the responsibility of managing the U.S. finances in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 5 of the U.S. Constitution, and Article 1, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution states that states may not coin their own money nor make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. Okay? So therefore you know that what you have now is not money. It's not it's not backed by gold nor silver. And you see a lot of these dumbass moors in these temples uh always talking about uh uh pay your taxes. You know, uh what taxes? Like dumbass moors like Tahaka Bay. I ain't, I'm talking about the young brother. I'm not talking about Tahaka L. Bay in Florida. I'm not talking about that brother. That brother is, uh, is not dumb from any stream of imagination. So I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about him and Brother Sharif Bay on the East Coast. I'm talking about pay your taxes. Yeah, I'm saying your names. I would say I want to say, say who they are, but I'm going to say who you are now because the time is too late. The hour is too late. Can't afford to spare anyone no more. I can't spare you no more. I got to put you out there now. And if you're listening to this show, so be it. And no, I will not come to you for a stupid-ass debate. It's a waste of time and energy. I don't waste my time and energy on that. But I'm talking about brothers like you all and sisters, too. Telling everybody they should pay their taxes, they should pay their property tax, they should pay their uh, car notes, they should pay this and pay that. While talking about y'all paid taxes and y'all did this and y'all paid that, y'all ain't paid a damn thing because you didn't have the money to pay it with. You never made any money. So how the hell are you paying taxes? How the hell are there any taxes since there since there are there is no money? You can argue with me with, with that, but you will lose. <clears throat> okay, let me move along here. Okay. The US the US Congress is supposed to be responsible for the financial affairs of the US not the privately owned and operated Federal Reserve, which functions as a de facto unconstitutional central bank of the U.S., 52% owned by Rothschild Bank of London and Berlin, 8% owned by Lazard Fraz Bank of Paris, 8% owned by Israel Moses CF Bank of Italy, 8% owned by Warburg Bank of Hamburg, in Amsterdam, Holland, 6% owned by Lehman Brothers of New York, 6% owned by Kuhn Loeb of New York, 6% owned by Chase Manhattan Rockefeller Bank of, of New York, 6% owned by Goldman Sachs. Okay? These, who can, these, are, these are the ones who can, these are the clowns that control your economy. These are the ones that control commerce. These are the ones that start wars and end wars. These are the ones that decide who wins, win wars, and who don't win. Okay?
any U.S. citizen that has ever has ever allegedly paid the IRS, read this again. Any U.S. citizen that has ever allegedly paid the IRS should look at who endorsed the check and use for payment. It was not the U.S. Treasury or U.S. citizens can forget about their taxes being used for running the country. You cannot pay debt with a debt. You can only pay a debt with substance like gold and silver, copper, rubies, diamonds, and so forth, so forth, and so forth. The fraudulent U.S. currency is a tender, a fancy way of saying it's an IOU that has no material value. Give me a pound. A pound of what? Give me a dollar. A dollar of what? On the back of the U.S. currency, one dollar bill, denomination, you will find not one seal, but two. There are two seals to pick two different governments, as I just got through explaining to you earlier, okay? <clears throat> two different jurisdictions, unless you were a Mason, most U.S. citizens and U.S. citizens had, had never seen the Great Seal. <clears throat> most of you have never seen the Great Seal Pyramid, with the all-seeing eye, prior to the late 1920s common era. What are they telling the U.S. citizen? By having the seal of the Moors on the back of their meeting of, of exchange, what are they telling the declared Moors as well as the comatose undeclared Moors? See, most of us don't know that the great seal that pre the back of the so-called dollar bill is our seal. That's ours. Unfortunately, uh, most of our people don't know that. They just see it as something to spend. They are so comatose and so socially engineered and mind controlled, they don't they don't even see what's really in front of them. Neither did I when I was comatose and socially engineered and mind control. I didn't see it either. A lot of us didn't see it until it came until the uh uh until it came into the reality and to identifying ourselves and the understanding of self. We see it very, very, very clearly now. Once you get into the knowing yourself, knowing who you are, knowing that you are <clears throat> uh, attached to the land that is a more, you know, land connected people, those are moors. Asiatic people, body of people. That's what Asiatic means. Once we get to understanding of who we are, understanding of self, you will never see the local news the same way. CNN, any of that mess. You'll never look at the news the same, same way because you know what they are telling you is a bunch of lies, deceptions. The, the, most of their information is misleading. It deals with a lot of mind control. They tell you such, such, such bomb this place. The group called ISIS and other groups, which the U.S. companies had created themselves. Because they always got to create an enemy for you to profit off of these wars that they create. <clears throat> Pro 
cross but profit off of our suffering, dying, and misery, and off of our mother's tears and our blood. Drug wars, world wars, you name it, they are all behind them. Never think that the drug trafficking and drug wars is a street corner enterprise. No, it is not. Far, far, far from it. All these have been socially engineered. by your world elite rulers. But their time's about over. Their days are numbered and their empires are crumbling like stale cakes. Like stale cakes and cookies. They are crumbling. As I speak to you this night. Okay? Let me move along here now, okay? They are telling the U.S. citizens that the U.S. is beholding to their lender, the Moors, owner of the Great Seal, due to the outstanding loan that has to be repaid. They are telling the the, the declared Moors that they recognize that the U.S. is obligated to repay the Moors what is owned $25 $25 million in gold and interest, penalties, and uh, fines. However, they are uh, withholding payment because uh, because the government of ours, they are, that they were familiar with the collapse and that they have to work hard to keep our people and they're un- then they are unaware of our inheritance. They claim that they don't know who to make payment to. They do now. They do know the the uh, the Mexican Empire Imperial government has made sure of it to the undeclared Moors that they are telling you that they are the fiduciaries managing your wealth until you come take it. Do you come and take it? Meaning they are spending with your wealth like a bank will loan out gold to earn interest until you withdraw all of your gold. And they know that length of time they have to do it. Do this is the length of your ignorance in regards to knowledge of self. Some of our people were bought here on slave ships, but the reality is the bulk of us were already here. Where did all of those free colors of the north in the north that, that never that were never slaves Descent come from, where did they come from? If they can't attempt to uh, move 100, 150 million people from the west coast of Akuba land in 100 years, but all the ships in the world today, they can't do it. So how the hell did they do it? Uh, most of us came from Africa. And they will tell you that much, Okay. This is because the statement I just read off you today, this is because most of us are not ready. Most of us are still comatose. Most of us not even haven't even heard the word more. If you believe, uh, hey, uh, thank you more, thanks more, they'll look at you strange. What did you say? What did you call me? I will call you a more. You never heard the word more? They shake, shake their, and they shake their head in the negative. They never heard of the word. They never heard of Prophet Noble Juwali. This is the very, very, very sad, sad, sad part of our people's situation. Very, very, very sad indeed. When a lot of stuff hits the fan, I don't know a lot of our people will probably be left behind. I don't know what's going to become of them. But I have heard there is some hope that uh, President Obama has signed, a before he left office, has signed uh, into effect that there will be 
the money coming to our people so they won't have to be in so much misery and pain. If that is true, oh, man, I know that makes me feel good. I don't know about you all that are nationalized. I don't know how y'all feel, but that makes me feel good because I love my family members. I don't want to see anything happen to them because I used to be like them. I used to go to church. I used to believe in Jesus. I used to eat pork chops. I used to smoke dope. I used to drink a lot. So never, when you get nationalized, when you get into the science and knowing a lot about yourself and getting to knowing yourself and knowing who you are and beginning uh, to know that you are and more and all this, you know, never forget where you came from. Never forget that, people. That is the biggest mistake that a lot of us make. Got to remember, hey, I used to be him. Hey, I used to be her. Always think about that. When you see a lot of our people don't want to listen, when we try to tell them things about nationality, about what's going on for us, the commercial activities in the world. Okay? Okay, let me go go on here. Move it along. How in the world could they have attempted to move 150 million people over a 300-year period using smaller ships? Barclays Bank made a fortune t- um, uh, making loans to slave ship builders, while Lloyds of London made a fortune insuring those slave ships, making fewer trips with smaller cargo capacity, taking a greater amount of time to make the trip than today's modern ships. Wake up and do the math. We were already here. Hello? Is anybody listening? Whatever they taught you in their public and private fool school systems, you believe, they told you that the so-called Indian is the first inhabitant of the hemisphere, of the Western Hemisphere, coming across a land bridge into so-called Alaska and worked their way south in recent search for food. Okay? This is what we all have been taught in school. We all have been taught that, that foolishness. And a lot of us in our adult years believe that to to today. A lot of us will live old and grow old and go to our graves with that belief. It is sad, very sad indeed. Move along here. If that were so, the oldest burial sites would be found in Alaska and would, wouldn't get younger as you work. You work your way south. However, the oldest bones are found farther south than so-called Alaska, and the bones in the indisputable Moorish phenotype. They taught you in their public-private food system that Cristobal Colon or Christopher Columbus discovered the so-called Americas. Obviously, this is not so. They told you he was on his way to the so-called Hindustan or India, what they call India today. But this original name and real name is Hindustan. And the people are not Indians. They are Hindustanis. Okay. Okay, move along. And got lost, yet his diaries tell you 
November 2nd entry. Call or the interpreters spoke Arabic, Chaldean, and Hebrews from the book Africa and the Discovery of America by Leo Weiner and were able to converse in Arabic with the king of Cuba, which, which is the original name was Kaba, K-A-B-A. The day today, uh, commonly known uh, called as Cuba. Okay, they are the same people that Cristobal referred to as woolly-haired Mohammedans, called Sufis, a fancy code word for more. Take note that Cristobal had no interpreter that spoke Hindu, yet it is alleged that he was headed he was headed to a land where where Hindu is a primary language. Translation, Cristobal knew exactly where he was going, and he knew exactly who he, he would find when he got there. Us. I hope a lot of people are listening tonight need to know what's going on. This has been going on through the thousands of years. This is the miseducation they have been giving us since we were children and babies and still giving our children and babies today as I speak. Hmm. Let me move along here. There have been no chartered banks in the U.S. venue since the inception of the U.S. bankruptcy. You have to be sovereign, to be chartered, to do business in 1933 common era with gold, substance, pull out of circulation. Banks in the U.S. venue began loaning commercial instruments in place of money and substance, which translates as they, as the loan you you loan you nothing and charge you interest which is usury they charge you interest on nothing ain't that something you put you go to the bank and you put your so called money in the bank but you put nothing in the bank and they charge you interest on nothing Boy, how a lot of us being, are being played as fools. You go to the bank, you put so-called money, or money that you never earned or never made, never made any money. <clears throat> but the high-ups in the banking system, they know this, and they loan your money out. When you go in there, say like you put like um, $100 in there. <coughs> Actually, it'd be up to ten thousand dollars or a thousand dollars. You put ten thousand dollars then in the bank, it will be a hundred thousand dollars. But you'll never see it. Loan it out, but wish they have no money to loan because you never put any money in there because you never had any money to put in the bank in the first place and then charge you interest on it. <laughs> Sometimes I got to laugh to keep from crying, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's some, as some people may say, it's a bitch. Man. Not referring to women, because I have highly respect for women. <clears throat> okay, just a phrase that some people use. Oh man! <clears throat> but this is what's been going on, you know. Um, well, I mean, it, it need to wake up and really know and realize how and wake up to the game that's being played on us. Cause they plan us for big time fools, and that's we that's why all we have been big time fools. But <clears throat> the 
game is about to be over. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And it's getting very, very, very near, too. Okay. There have been no chartered banks in the U.S. Mint. Oh, I'm ready. Already, I'm sorry. This is the true inspiration behind all gun control laws. They they know that when the unsuspecting so-called white U.S. citizen finally figure out what they were, the so-called white U.S. citizen find out figure out what they were sold that they were sold out, the armed so-called white folks will come after them with their guns blazing. You ain't lying. They sure will. Because they found out when they found out they're niggers too. When they found out their birth certificates made them also 14th Amendment citizens. Because the birth certificate was actually designed for so-called ex-black slaves. For those of us that were slaves, because a lot of us were never slaves. But for some of us that were slaves, that's what that birth certificate was designed for. That's why, you know, you see a lot of these Europeans with their birth certificates at the DMV and, you know, trying to get their license, and you see them at the uh, Color Recorder of Records and Deeds and Vital Statistics trying to get their marriage license and with their birth certificates and all that, you know. And I said, man, are they being making uh, making the ass out of big time? Just as much as they making the ass out of us. <clears throat> but, 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 our birth certificates are worth a lot more than theirs. So you know, we have to, uh, you know, look at that. That reality, as I said before, that's why most of us are in prisons. I mean, that's why you see most of the, uh, the inmates in prisons are us. That's why you see most of um, <clears throat> and people at the, uh, the, at the uh, uh, there's this mock court called traffic court are us. They're digging into our bonds, which is our birth certificates. You think? What they'll charge you and, and as fines in those courts as a two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar fine. No, 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 no. They get into your bond, they get into your birth certificates. And there ain't no telling how much money they taken out of your bond or birth certificate, which is the estate. As well. Maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars. Because I think it's about a million dollars when you were born. It was $630,000, I believe, a while back. I'm not sure. Depends upon um, how much you weighed when you were born. But the baby weighed, what, five pounds and eight ounces? Okay, that's five pounds and eight ounces of gold. That you were worth, and your birth certificate, and your, which is your bond, your state, you know, you know, like they say, and like the like the old saying goes, uh, you're worth your weight in gold. That's where that term comes from, believe it or not. Okay, let me go on here. Uh, the Federal Reserve was is is used on the U.S. citizens. Technically, there's no such thing as a U.S. citizen because the U.S. is a for-profit corporation chartered to business that has sub subsidiaries state of New Mexico as opposed for the New Mexico state 
or Mexican state, republic, and franchise U.S. citizen, resident, alien, artificial entities, corporations, you that have no rights that a court is bound to respect because as an intimate object before a court, you have no feelings, cannot own anything, cannot speak, that cannot state a claim upon which relief may be granted. If that was the case, the uh, <clears throat> the for-profit corporation, McDonald's, could make you a citizen, have, have its own citizenry, while the International Monetary Fund and World Bank are used on our family in Kenya, Zimbabwe, Indonesia, Korea, etc. Because especially, you know, uh, you have no feelings because you have been declared as an artificial person. And when you say you are black, uh, people of color, African American, there's no such people. So they become status. That is the status that you own. You own the artificial person status. When you said you, I mean, you know, that falls under the color of law, color is, a, is, is, is something is something of a semblance other than what is real. You are not a real person. Therefore, that's what it says here that you have no feelings. cannot own anything because you never made any money to own anything. You never bought anything. You had never even bought even a candy bar. You didn't even bought that. You never bought the underwear that you wear on your body. None of us did. Ain't that something? Think about it. You have we. I'll put it this way. We, we haven't even bought lawfully the waste paper to wipe ourselves when we get through using the bathroom. Can't get no deeper than that. Ain't that deep. Think about it. You didn't pay for that because you didn't have the money to pay it with. You bought what the uh just bought uh, uh six part rolls of toilet paper. No, you didn't. No, you didn't either. Okay, let me move it along here. Read this again. The, I, the, <clears throat> no, the International Money Fund and World Bank suckered these governments into accepting loans of nothing, fraudulent, non existing U.S. currency, and charged them interest in courts. These governments, like their U.S. citizen counterparts, voluntarily elected into the fraud unknowingly and pledged to repay the non loan. Hey, I am good for it, as they pledge all of the labor of their respective citizenry and all that they own, including their sovereignty. Thus, their citizenry became a surety collateral that backs the securities sold to the highest bidder. Every business day on what is called the bond market, congratulations, you are you have just been pawned. This is why the UN, UN is demanding that its members make all of their citizens have a birth certificate. The registered birth certificate is tied to a surely collateral laborer, and that is you. There is a loan attached to that birth certificate that is sold on the bond market. Also, that will be taxed to pay the loan or the non-loan and interest. Suckers. Hook line, and sinker. The Maxim Moore Empire and its imperial government considers Kenya, Zimbabwe, Indonesia, and Korea as a part and parcel of the Maxim Moore Empire. If this is hard to believe, 
But look at the definition of admiralty, the fall of the Western Empire. What Western Empire? I thought this was the Western Empire, or it is it. And the last of the United States consular courts, Moroccan, Morocco, was abolished in 1956. Morocco was established in Morocco and Northwest Africa, the Moroccan, the Moroccan kingdom, not the Moroccan here, not the Moroccan empire here, the Moroccan kingdom in Northwest Africa. That Morocco was established as a nation, while the Moroccan consular courts ended in 1956 over here. Coincidence? I don't. I think not. Says there, Admiralty, a court which has a very extensive jurisdiction of maritime causes, civil and criminal controversies arising out of acts done upon or relating to the sea and questions of prize. It is property, the successor. It is oh, it is the property. It is the proper. It is properly the successor of the consular courts, which were emphatically the courts of merchants and seagoing persons established in the principal maritime cities on the revival of commerce after the fall of the Western Empire to empty to I mean to supply the want of tribunals that might decide causes arising out of maritime commerce. Also the system of jurisprudence relating to and growing out of the jurisdiction and practice of the Admiralty Courts, Consular Courts, courts held by the Consul of one country within the territory of another, under authority given by treaty for the settlement of all of civil cases. In some instances, they had also a criminal jurisdiction, but in the respect, but in this respect, were subject to review by the courts of the home government. The last of the United States consular courts of Morocco was abolished in 1956, the same year that the Moroccan kingdom in Northwest Africa was established and recognized as a nation. So when you when you hear Hillary Clinton and President Barack Obama and the youth on you see them on YouTube when they talk about Morocco was the first nation, uh, the first ones that recognized the United States as a nation. Who were they talking about? They weren't talking about them. They weren't talking about the Morocco over there in Africa. Northwest Africa, they couldn't have been because it didn't exist at that time. So who were they talking about? They were talking about us. They were talking about the Moroccan Empire here in the West, Northwest Central and South Amexum and its adjoining islands. It has him at the bottom. Is this even if if this is even harder to believe, then read the King Alfred plan, now called Rex eighty four plan. Yeah, read that. If you can ever get a hold to it, read it. It says here, he will be a formidable, formidable enemy. Hold on, hold on, let me, let me guess. Let me start from the beginning here. The following excerpt text is derived from the few pages which are extracted from the limited release top secret inductory programming manual and documents which have been known and published as Executive Order Number 11490. Executive Order. Number 11490, October 19, 1969, the King Alfred Plan, the Rex 84 Plan, Concentration Camps, Executive Order Number 11490, Expanded, Top Secret, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, Introduced, Introductory, Manual Operation Research, Technical 
Manual, TM, Technical Manual, SW, 7905.1, okay? A lot of, uh, I'm not, uh, <clears throat> a lot of, before I get into this, uh, I want to put out uh, something here and say something to a lot of the Moors that when they first uh, hear about nationality and birth rights, and, you know, uh, a lot of them make the big mistake when they be on the road and on the highways, uh, they want to argue with these policyholders about, hey, you know, I don't have to have any license. Uh, you're a bankrupt nation. You're nothing but a corporation. And you're not a police officer. You are a policyholder. And blah, 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 blah. You're absolutely right. There's a lot of things you have to do before you can uh, travel before you do uh, or you travel, not drive but travel because I want to separate the two you want to uh, understand the right to travel and the privilege to drive there's a difference between the two and when you don't have license uh, I saw uh, one on one incident I saw on YouTube that these brothers were stopped by the, uh, I believe it was the New Jersey police. Uh, they were stopped and asked for a driver's li- asked them for their driver's license. And the brothers told them they don't have one. They don't need to have a driver's license. You know, the police, why you don't police? I mean, the policy holder asked them why you don't have a driver's license because I don't need one. Those laws don't, does not apply to me. I'm gonna show you my nationality card. You know. But these brothers didn't have no kind of documentation or paperwork to back that up, that they were travelers, that they um, didn't need to have a driver's license. They were traveling and not driving. See, you have to have documentation and papers on that. I mean, when uh, when you get a lot of your papers and documentation on being nationalized, that's a very, very, very good thing. That is, the, that is one of the very most important, uh, number one thing you should do, get nationalized. But there are other things that you need to do in order to travel on these roads to keep these policyholders off your back. The, one of the things, don't argue with them. Do not argue with them. It's a waste of time and energy. Know your rights. Know what you are doing. Understand and understand and overstand what you are doing. You need to have right to travel documentation. You need to have your own license plates. A lot of your documentation and papers must be sent to the Secretary of the State of your st- state you domicile in and the Secretary of the State of the United I, I mean the Secretary State of the United States or the State Department. And to the county. You have to all have a lot of documentation to do before you try that. And you need a do not detain documentation. To send to all these people, even to the police department where you domicile at, the secretary of state of the state you domicile in, you have to have all that in place before you try to do that. And this is why a lot of Moors make mistakes at, wind up in jail. You know, the sister I can't. Uh, Think of her name that got killed by these that were murdered by these uh, policy holders at her home. Uh, they said that she got killed because of Tosh Tariq Bay's teachings. That's not true. Tosh Tariq Bay never taught her. Tosh Tariq Bay never knew this sister, and this sister never knew Tosh Tariq Bay because of her misunderstanding and mis. Understanding and misoverstanding 
of how this thing actually works. They came at they came they came after and they murdered her. And sometimes even if you do understand and overstand a lot a lot of these things, they might come and kill you anyway. They're trying to hang on to to this false uh, government and jurisdiction, which is the corporation. They're still trying to hold on to it, so they're trying to pull anything and everything. So also, beware. But what I'm saying, when you go to the courts, a lot of them don't believe in filing paperwork. I don't need to file no paperwork. You know, I, I, I you don't need no paperwork. I'm a Moor. This is my nationality court. And then the judge, you don't have any paperwork or documentation. And the county recorder of records and deeds of vital statistics or any court records, court orders, documents that saying that this is who you are. If you don't, then you are in trouble. Like I heard from Dr. Uh, Alim, he was saying that uh, he found a lot of these brothers and sisters uh, were arrested and had to spend 30 days for psychiatric evaluation. But a lot of them want to, you know, think that they're understanding and overstanding nationality uh think that this is what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to argue with the policyholders, call them names. I know these brothers were calling them. Look at that dumb, stupid son of a bitch. Look at him. That motherfucker don't know. That motherfucker's silly, ain't he? I mean, they, they were just downright disrespecting these policyholders. They had no respect for them at all. <coughs> but I'm here to tell you that it's not how you deal with that. That is the wrong way to deal with that. You want to deal with that in the most intelligent manner. Anyway, the brothers that I'm speaking about, they wound up getting pepper sprayed. Some of them uh, wound up uh, busting their car windows and out, pulling them, pulling them out of the car and going to jail. I just want to put that out there. Okay. I'm running out of time here. But I'm going to try to get more, as much as I can, before they say I have to uh, get off the show. So I'm going to read this here. The preliminary memo, Department of Defense. This memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That report is now in preparation. There will be many cities where the minority will be able to put into the streets, uh, into the uh, street, a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. He will be a formidable enemy, for he is bound to the continent by heritage and knows that. Political asylum will not be available to him in other countries. The greatest concentration of the minority is in the Deep South and eastern seaboard of the Great Lakes region and the West Coast. While the national population exceeds that of the minority by more than ten times, we must realistically take into account the following. Hmm. He will be a vulnerable enemy? for he is bound to the continent, land called North America, by heritage and knows the political asylum will not be available to him in other countries. So we are bound to this continent by heritage. What is the meaning of heritage? Okay, heritage. <clears throat> now, heritage is an inheritance from heritor, hereditor, to inherit from her- hereditus, 
inheritance from heirs, an heir, property that is and can be inherited, something handed down from one ancestor or the past as a, as a characteristic, a cultural tradition, or culturistic tradition, the rights and burdens or status resulting from being born in a certain time or place, birthright, in the Bible, as chosen people of God, Israelites, the Christian church as being laws over God, heritage, and Webster Dictionary, and Peter, I mean, and, wait a minute, hold up, the Christian church as being the laws of God, heritage, one, Peter, uh, chapter five, paragraph three, that's in the Bible, Webster's New Universal Unabridged Dictionary, okay, they're getting ready to cut me off, so I have more stuff. Go, I, I might go over, over this next, next week. So they're getting ready to cut me off. So, um, hey, how I tell you, watch the East and Bawasama Dakunda, which means peace, family. And I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. All right. See you next week. Next week, same time, same channel. Peace and love. I'm out.